So you might want to try out that little exercise. And I got a feeling if you haven't done it before, it's going to blow your mind. You're not going to believe it. It's unbelievable the first time you do that. Quick programming note, we've got a new show, The Gear Guide Show, and our first Gear Guide Show was a bike test report, special feature, where we're reviewing the BMC Team Machine SLR01. That's coming out in a little bit. Make sure you subscribe, you don't wanna miss that review. If this seems like content that might help you, consider subscribing. If you hit the like button, really appreciate it. So today's show was inspired by two people. One had a question about stem length, and the other had a question about bar and stem in general. So the first guy wants to know if running a 75 millimeter stem is okay. <laughs> well, considering he's got a 47 centimeter bike, yeah, because it's proportional. So having a 75 millimeter stem, if you're running a 47 centimeter frame, seems to make sense to me. The other question was from a viewer, Christy Dolan. How good are the Cannondale system save and not handlebars? and Cannondales, not wheels. I hear good things about them, but how come the pro team not use either? Surprise Cannondale would not want all their components and accessories being used. <laughs> Here's the thing. I'm pretty sure Cannondale would love them to be using their not stuff, their bar and stem and their wheels. The thing is, pro teams have pro sponsorships, and I don't know what the sponsorship details are there, but I can tell you this, about the knot bar and stem system. First of all, it's a bit heavy. It's on the heavy side. It makes your front end feel heavy. The other thing too is it's complicated. <laughs> There's a lot of nuts and bolts in there. And if you're a mechanic for a pro tour team and you're servicing eight to 10 bikes a day, <laughs> every day, you don't want a system that's complicated. So just a couple of points I wanna go over that came up in the comments discussion with Christy. First of all, if you notice these days, a lot of bike manufacturers are going to kind of like their own proprietary design for components. So this is uh, the stem for the new not save bar combination for uh, Cannondale's bikes, their Super 6 Evo and their System 6. I'm sure it's a wonderful design. The thing is, it complicates the situation. Having those flat bars when you want to run a GoPro on the handlebars because you're making YouTube videos about bikes. <laughs> it's a complication. Uh, just having an option for the bars with the reach and drop that I like. So for me, these kind of system designs, they're fine, but they complicate things and they limit your options. So for me, I prefer kind of just the traditional. It's lightweight, it works well, it's not complicated, it's easy to service. Another thing that came up was kind of the different tiers of component that someone like Cannondale has. So this is their C3. This is their third tier of stem. So you have C1, C2, C3. The C3 or the C2 is a great option. It's a little bit heavier, but when you take away all those grams to make the lightest weight version, the C1, you're also reducing rigidity. And when you're standing up and you're cranking your bars back and forth, you're climbing the bike or you're sprinting it, with that loss of rigidity, now you're flexing the stem instead of transferring your power into the crank. That's something to consider. On the other hand, if you don't care about power transference, but you're all about uh, compliance and comfort, having a stem with less rigidity, so it's got some flex when you go over some rough pavement, might be the way to go. The point is, know about the component what are its resistance and absorption characteristics, and then tune the ride to the way you like it using component choices. I have an extensive collection of stems because stems are a big deal. They affect a lot of things with your riding. And so I like to experiment with things that are a big deal so I can tune the experience to the way I like it. Now, the thing about stems is they're gonna affect your steering response, think safety. They affect handling and the roll of the bike. That's your efficiency. And your stem length affects your biomechanical position. Think comfort and power transfer. So I'm gonna handle each one of those in order. Stem length has a big effect on steering response. So if you have a short stem, a shorter stem, 
the bars as they rotate are going to create a shorter arc and a shorter arc is easier. It takes less input to get more movement of the wheel with a shorter arc and vice versa. When you have a longer stem, it's a longer arc. You have to move the bars more to get the same movement of the wheel. So that affects your steering response. And if you're on a mismatch stem length, to your bike, your, your proportions, you could have too much or too little steering response. And when you're cornering at high speed, that is not safe. <laughs> you're not going to feel safe and stable. The length of your stem affects your weight distribution on the bike, your fore and aft weight distribution. So if you have a longer stem, you're going to have more weight over the front wheel. That's going to pin the wheel down a little bit and it's going to tone down the steering response. It's also going to weight the bike in the front end to have a little bit more grip. So when you go into a corner, it's going to want to hold the line. But if you have a shorter stem and you're sitting further back in the bike, putting more weight to the rear wheel, the steering is going to have a lighter feel. There's just less weight on the front wheel and it's the front wheel is going to turn a little bit easier. But what you find is it might not hold the same line when you're carving a radius. It might want to fade to the outside. The other thing too is bike designers design these bikes for a weight distribution balance. So it's not 50-50 over both wheels. Sometimes it's 55-45, 60-40, something like that. There's a little more weight on the rear wheel because that's where you're sitting. That's the most of your weight. But the bike's going to roll most efficiently when you get that weight distribution correct. So you want to have a stem length and a seat length and all those proportions so your bike has good weight distribution so the bike rolls better. And here's a pro tip. If you ride in the drops as the bike designer is intended, the bike rolls more efficiently because it has a proper weight distribution. So the third thing is your biomechanical position. And that means putting your skeletal lengths, the lengths of your bones, <laughs> in proper alignment. And what that's going to do is uh, help your comfort and it's going to help you prevent overuse injury. It's also going to give you your greatest efficiency your greatest pedaling power. When you sit on the bike, you want your position to kind of put you in like the potential energy of a coiled spring. A convenient way to talk about your biomechanical position and power transfer on your bike is with this. The ab roller. You ever use the ab roller? <laughs> what you notice with the ab roller is there's a spot that's not too close and not too far away when you're all stretched out, but there's this sweet spot where you kind of have your maximum strength, right? You feel the, the most connection between your upper body and your lower body. Well, it's the same thing with your stem length. You're trying to find that place where your, your shoulder hinges, where your body sh hinges at the shoulder, is in proper alignment so you can transfer power from your upper body to your lower body kind of that coiled up spring with a lot of potential energy and so when you stand up and you're cranking the bars back and forth you're creating force with your upper body that you want to transfer into the crank well if you're too stretched out you're not going to be very efficient at that transfer of power you want to have the length of your stem put the hinges of your shoulder in that sweet spot where you have the greatest strength, where you can transfer the most energy from your upper body into your lower body. You can use your, your upper body muscles as an additional spring mechanism to pop your legs down and push that crank to get more force for forward momentum. I'm going to give you a demonstration that you can use to sit on the bike for greater power efficiency. So you can use both halves of your body because there's two halves to the body. You have your lower half, your lower body, and then you have your upper half, your upper body. And your upper and lower halves are attached where your spine meets your pelvis. And the way you add rigidity to that connection is through your core muscles. What happens with a lot of people when they sit on the bike is their pelvis rolls forward and it disengages their core muscles. Your core is like a marshmallow, 
right? Your upper and lower bodies aren't rigidly connected. So you sit on the seat and all the upper body movements you have kind of get absorbed like, like this marshmallow. So when you don't activate your core muscles and your core muscles are like a marshmallow and you have some upper body movement, it's absorbed. It's not transferred to your lower body. Whereas if you engage your core muscles and it's more like this wooden dowel, right? Every movement to your upper body gets transferred to your lower body through that rigid core, through that rigid center. If you stand up, you could do this right now. You put your hands on the top of these pelvis bones right here. And if you're standing up nice and straight, that's neutral pelvic tilt. If you rotate forward, that's anterior pelvic tilt. And if you rotate backwards, that's posterior pelvic tilt. Well, what happens with a lot of people when they sit on the bike is their pelvis rolls forward and it disengages their core muscles because they have anterior pelvic tilt when they're sitting on the seat. The solution is to roll back your pelvis into neutral. Now that engages your core. Now your upper body and your lower body have a rigid connection through your rigid core that's engaged because you rotated your pelvis back to neutral. You can feel it in your spine. You'll feel a difference in your spine. You'll feel a bunch of activation in your abdominal muscles, maybe for the first time. But what you're gonna feel is that transfer of your upper body movements that you're making through that rigid core is now transferred into your pelvis that's sitting on the seat and the bike has a lot more movement to it because what's happening with your upper body is now getting transferred into the bike. So next time you sit on your bike, make a conscious effort to roll your pelvis back and see what happens. See what, how the bike reacts to that. Now here's the thing, that's how you ride your bike. That's how you sit on your bike. Like I did a video a couple weeks ago about numb hands. So if you're sitting on your bike and you have your core disengaged, and so all of your kind of your weight is being supported by your hands, your hands go numb because your hands are catching too much of your weight. You roll that pelvis back, you engage your core, and now your core's helping uh, take that weight off your hands. You're not gonna have numb hands. You're gonna have better power transference. <laughs> you're gonna be just better in general because you're engaging your core and you're using your whole body to propel that bike down the road. So you might wanna try out that little exercise. And I got a feeling if you haven't done it before, it's going to blow your mind. You're not going to believe it. It's unbelievable the first time you do that. The last thing I want to say about stems is it's a great place to put a message to yourself. <laughs> it's right there in front of your face. You're looking down at it. You put yourself a little reminder and it can help you improve your cycling. So if you ever notice when you're doing a hard effort, sometimes you have a tendency to hold your breath, right? You kind of start breathing shallow. Everything's tensed up. So I put a message on my stem that says breathe. So when I'm in a hard effort, I look down, I remind myself to relax, to feel what's going on, and to breathe deeply. Use a rhythmical breathing to relax my body and mind so I'm better prepared to make that hard effort. So if there's something that you're working on, whether it's your posture, maybe it's rotating your pelvis back so you can engage your core muscles, whatever you're trying to work on, during your rides, it's a good place to put a little note to yourself. So there you have it. That's a little bit about stems and how to be a better, more efficient cyclist. Quick programming note, we've got a new show, the Gear Guide Show, and our first Gear Guide Show was a bike test report special feature where we're reviewing the BMC Team Machine SLR01. That's coming out in a little bit. Make sure you subscribe. You don't want to miss that review. That's the Ask Jack Show for this week. Hope it added some value to your life. If it did, why not hit the subscribe button? And if you like it, this video can get out to more people. We really appreciate it. Another Ask Jack Show next week, Tuesday, 10 o'clock. Thanks for watching.